In this video, I'm going to give you the five step process to change your name on DishoKid. This is something that I actually just did. So I'm able to talk from experience, not just something I read on the internet. I highly suggest watching this entire video because of course you want to make sure you're doing all these steps correctly to officially change your artist name from your old name to your new name. Number one, do you have to? I have to stress this because if let's say you got a legal notice that your artist name conflicts with another company or something, okay, well, you kind of don't have a choice. You have to change your artist name. However, I do want to say that when it comes to changing your artist name, there's a lot of tricky things that come into play. And I did make this video to make it as simple as possible. However, there could be things that could go wrong. You don't know what's going to happen when you change your artist name from your old one to your new one. So I say to everybody, before you even get into these steps, the biggest step is actually considering, do I really have to do this? If the answer is yes, then of course keep watching. Really consider this though, and don't skip over this part because I'm not joking when I say a lot of bad things can go wrong. You don't know what's gonna happen and you really are rolling the dice when you do change your artist name. So first step, do you have to 100%? If so, then continue. Number two, back everything up. Now, the good thing about DishoKid is they have the DishoKid Vault. What it is, is it's a backup of every release you've ever had in terms of not only the song itself, but also your artwork. So this is great. Now, if let's say you deleted a release in the past, it will still be in your vault. But just to be safe rather than sorry, what I would do, go on your DishoKid platform and download each song and artwork of that old artist. Make sure you have like a folder or something on your computer that has all that old music and your old artwork. Even though, yeah, it's saved on the DishoKid cloud. Again, I always like to be safe rather than sorry. Make sure you have all your files located on your computer. Step number three, delete the releases. This is why, like I said in part two, you wanna back everything up. You wanna make sure your releases are wiped. The reason why is what we're going to be doing is deleting everything, reformatting it, and re-uploading it. And if there's any confliction with the song or the metadata or whatever, it can make this a lot trickier. You want to make sure that when you release your music under the new artist, that all those old releases under the old artist name are completely removed as much as possible. And like I said, when it comes to the DistroKid Vault and the DistroKid Cloud, your old releases will still be in there even after you delete them, which is pretty awesome. However, just to be safe than sorry, make sure everything is backed up before deleting all those releases. Number four, recreate. Now at this point, you have all your releases from that old artist and they're removed from the internet, which is good. The next step is you're gonna have to recreate them. Now, the biggest thing is the artwork. So for me personally, I changed my name from Style Free to Prismic. Here's the old artwork under Style Free, and here's the new artwork under Prismic. As annoying as it was, I literally had to go to every single release and make new artwork with my new name. It was a very annoying and tedious process, but I did it, right? And that's what you have to do. I did not touch my songs, however, because the songs are really the same. However, if you do have producer tags on them, you may have to change that. So in case you don't know a producer tag, very common in hip hop, for example, when a producer says their name in a song. So let's say you want to change your name from Joe Schmo to Bob Smith. Well, a lot of songs that say, again, in hip hop, for example, will be like, Joe Schmo Productions, and then the beat drops, right? Or the beat kicks in. However, though, now that you're Bob Smith, you have to re-record that vocal part. So let's say if you do want to have your artist name be in the actual song, you're gonna have to go back into Ableton or Logic or FL Studio or whatever DAW you are using and re-record those producer tags or artist tags. The biggest thing at this point now, once everything's wiped from the internet, is make sure you take all your files, both the music ones, and the artwork, which in my opinion is probably more annoying and more tedious, recreate them so now I have all your new artist information ready to go. Step number five, upload. Now remember, in order to upload on DigiKid, if you have multiple artists, 
which you will, you have to have a Musicians Plus account. Now, I suggest anyway having one, even if let's say you have one artist and one artist only on the Musicians Plus account, you can have a custom label name. I've said this before, and you should have a Musicians Plus account anyway. It's 16 extra dollars a year, so it's really not that much more expensive compared to the regular Musicians account. And even though you're like, Mark, I only have one artist, I'm just changing the name. Under the way DistroKid works, it lets you go from Joe Schmo to Bob Smith, even though you have no releases under Joe Schmo and all your releases under Bob Smith now, unfortunately that counts as two artists. So you do have to have a Musicians Plus account. Once you do, then you can start uploading all your music as normally. However, now, as opposed to being uploaded under Joe Schmo, now it's uploaded under Bob Smith. Now I have two super important FYIs. FYI number one, and this is a big one, is the method. Now there's two main ways to change, quote unquote, your artist's name. One is removing those releases, re-uploading them under the new artist's name. That is the method I demonstrated in this video. The reason why is back in the day, you could not do this under Apple Music and iTunes. Some platforms allowed you to re-upload music under a different name. Other platforms did not like Apple Music and iTunes. And so the biggest thing back in the day is, was like, well, I don't know exactly what the best move is because Apple Music used to actually block you from re-uploading songs under the new name. Now that's changed. So the good thing now is it's very easy on every platform to delete your music, re-upload it under a new name. The second method, which I've talked about in other videos, is to go to edit release and edit all the releases with the new name. I suggest not to do this. There's a couple different reasons why. One, your artwork, yeah, you could edit it and everything, but for the most part, your artwork might stay the same. So if you have artwork saying track, whatever, by Joe Schmo, and someone goes to play it, but it's on your Bob Smith account, the artwork might still say Joe Schmo. So keep that in mind. The second thing under why editing releases can get tricky is the speed of the platform. Let's say you announce, you're like, hey, I'm now Bob Smith, and someone goes to Spotify, they may find your releases under Bob Smith. However, on another platform, it might take a bit longer for them to edit everything and re-update it. And therefore, when they go to another platform, there's no Bob Smith, it's still only Joe Schmo. Every platform will have a different timeline of editing the releases, and this can get very annoying because each one's gonna be at a different speed. You are way better off deleting all your releases and then re-uploading. And FYI number two, the metadata. Now this has been a big question I've gotten. I've already done like a specific video about this, but I really have to talk about this and that is the metadata. Basically the streams, the downloads, the numbers. Do they carry over or not? It depends. Now for me personally, when I change from style free to Prismic, I'll pick Spotify for example, those streams actually carried over. So I released this particular release as you're seeing right now on the screen. I released this in January of 2022. However, in 2021, you're seeing that they have those streams there. Now, of course, that release wasn't available, quote unquote, in 2021. However, Spotify could tell, hey, we released this before under Style Free. We recognize this release. So now that we're releasing it under Prismic, we know that those streams are kind of the same. So those streams, all that metadata actually does carry over. However, on YouTube, for example, what YouTube does, YouTube manually deletes that video or video, it's basically just your song, and re-uploads a whole new video. And as a result of the way YouTube and YouTube music works, those views and streams on your YouTube videos do not carry over. This depends platform to platform. Now for me personally, on Spotify, for example, it worked out. On YouTube, it didn't. This could depend situation to situation. The songs are the same. Let's say you change your producer tag or artist tag, like I mentioned earlier in this video, Spotify may look at it and say, ah, you know what? This song, it's similar to a prior release, but it's actually different because you have a new producer tag or artist tag. Therefore, you're starting from scratch when it comes to your total streams overall in terms of that lifetime of that release. This is something to keep in mind, or maybe you release the same song and for whatever reason, those streams don't carry over. 
That's what I said way back when in the beginning that makes you really consider this, not because of just one, the hassle of changing your name, but two, if let's say you got a million streams on a release and you go to re-upload it or re-release it under a new name, it's very possible you're starting back at zero, but it's also very possible you're starting at a million or continuing off where you left off earlier. Just keep that in mind that any single time you change your artist's name, you are 100% rolling the dice.